Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this big guy right here. This is the Luminox Atacama Field Day Day. First off, I want to thank my buddy Nathan for uh, loaning this guy along. Very interesting little watch, and I'm really glad I got a chance to spend some time with it. So thanks for that, Nathan. Next thing, let's do a little bit of size measurement on this guy. Um, this is actually a very large watch. Um, I'll put it here next to my um, token very large watch, which is the uh, Tuta Pelagos, which is a very different very large watch. But you can see here that this guy absolutely dwarfs the Pelagos. Well, maybe not dwarfs, but it's, it's bigger than it is. Although it's actually uh, substantially thinner, which is definitely nice. Um, so you can get a sense of that. And then I'll do some measurements on this guy. Um, what you can see here is that this guy, if you uh, exclude the crown and crown guard, comes in someplace in the vicinity of 45 millimeters wide with the crown in there. It's closer to 49. The lug to lug distance which is really important for wearability for those of us with smaller wrists, comes in at a stunning 50 freaking 3 uh, millimeters there. The overall width of the crystal is uh, non-trivial as well, coming in closer to 38 millimeters, and the thickness of it is actually not bad, given that it is a quartz movement, coming in around 12 millimeters. Um, not bad for a watch this size, that is. And then the band, uh, the, the, the size of the band here, and I'll try and measure it, although my calipers aren't very good at this, unfortunately. I'm getting some better ones for it. Um, but it looks like we're coming in here. That can't be right, oh, can it? 26 millimeters? That's that's insane. Um, really? Well, that's 22. Yeah, I guess that's 26, right? All righty, so we got a big freaking band on this guy. Um, the next thing, a quick note on this brand. Who is Luminox? What is Luminox? Luminox is a company that is kind of known for one thing. They are a watch company that does lume, that does nighttime luminosity. And the way that they're doing that here is using tritium gas tubes. I'll highlight those here. What we can see here is we've got a little tritium tube here, here, here. Basically, at every one of these hours, there's a gas tube. And then if we look at the hands of the watch, there's a little tube in there. And you can see these are actually three-dimensional tubes here sitting on top of the hands. Here's a tube, and then here's a tube laid into the minute. And what these are filled with is actual freaking tritium, elemental tritium, H3. Well, actually, I don't know if it's an element or a... It's an isotope, whatever. Um, H3, it's uh, three hydrogens stacked all together, and when you do that, they happen to get pretty radioactive. Um, it's not like the radiation that kills you kind, although I guess it could be if you did it wrong. But in this situation, what they actually have is a little tube of, uh, of that uh, coupled with a phosphorescing compound that when it gets hit by that radiation puts out a little bit of a visible light glow. And so as a result, this is always on loom. This is always illuminated, although you're not really going to be able to see it well here just because because of the nature of the uh, filming environment. But uh, nevertheless, uh, you never need to charge it. It is always going to glow just as brightly. It is a, a fact of physics that this glows rather than any kind of glow-in-the-dark powder you're used to. So that's cool, and that's kind of the big deal here. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very interesting little watch right here. To start with, um, this is an interesting case color. It's sort of a gunmetal gray, um, and I like the fact that they didn't go like full-on black, although you can see where the gunmetal coating has started to rub off a little bit there, but it gives it a little bit bit more of an intrigue and it's not like you know black watches are kind of doing their own thing and it's not just another silver watch it's it's kind of a nice detail and it it goes well with the carbon fiber that they've got on the dial next thing actually let's talk about that carbon fiber here i'll see if i can zoom in slightly what we can see here is as I change the perspective on this guy, the carbon fiber, different parts of it really do light up. It has the feeling of actual carbon fiber. Um, it, like it, it looks like good carbon fiber should look like, and that's great. Um, honestly, there is so much bad carbon fiber in the world that to see good carbon fiber in a watch face, that's really nice. Um, and so th th that's good. Next thing, um, the strap on this guy, I'll zoom back out a little bit, is not unattractive. It's a leather sort of thing. You've got some studs here, gunmetal matching here. You've got yourself uh, some thread down here that makes it look pretty attractive. The buckle on it is pretty serious with the two, two tongs and everything like that. Tongs? I guess it looks like tongs, right? The two forks, the two strap, but I don't freaking know what they are. I just work here. Um, but anyways, it's got that. It's not unattractive. Um, it is a day-date function watch. So you can see here it is Saturday the 15th. And in fact, it has the day in both the English and the German, which is cool. Um, so that's nice. And day-date is a nice functionality because if you're like me, you can occasionally get temporally discombobulated. So having both the day and the date is handy. Next thing, it is a quartz movement. In case you can't tell from the fact that it is tick, tick, tick along. 
Um, and what that means is it's going to be quite accurate, usually around plus or minus, uh, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.5 seconds a day, which is quite good. And it's also going to be pretty durable. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to kill this guy. Um, it'll need batteries every so often, which is a bit of a downside. But you know what? Okay, whatever, not a big deal. And quartz, generally speaking, is the better choice for most humans. Next thing, this is 200 meters worth of water resistant. Given it's on a leather strap, so it's a little bit academic. But what that does mean is that you don't have to worry about water as you wear in this guy. Um, you know, if you get thrown into a pool, you know what, you're going to be just freaking fine because you've got 200 meters worth of water resistance. That is absolutely a beautiful thing. So, um, you know, I, I very much appreciate that they went not only water resistant with this, but they went the extra mile, gave you the full 200, which means even as the seals age on this guy, it's still going to be just fine. So that's good. Then finally, on the good side, this guy is using sapphire crystal here. It is real sapphire, and in fact, it is anti-reflective coated. Um, uh, let me see if I, do I have a watch handy without anti-reflective? No, I don't actually. Oh, yeah, I do. Here we go. Um, this right here is the, uh, this is a Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> um, and you can see here the reflection of the window behind me. Um, here, well, okay, it's probably not, can I show this? Yeah, like on this guy, you can see it completely washes out the watch, uh, the watch face, but on this guy, it's not so much. Um, I, I, it's not a strong AR coating, but you know what? It does the trick, and I appreciate that they've got it in there. So um, th that's absolutely nice. Um, and just makes it a little bit more legible uh, at a glance in a variety of lighting conditions. So um, there you go. Next thing, actually, that's the last thing on the good side, is that it's got a real sapphire crystal with some AR coating. Not the strongest ever, but it does the trick. Um, it is 200 meters water resist. It's quartz watch, which means it's accurate and durable. It's got day date features. Uh, it's a, on a strap that's not unattractive, and it has a DLC case with a very nice carbon fiber dial. On the great side to me is the tritium here. Um, look, that is sort of the shtick. That is the joy here. That is what Luminox has going for them. And I'm going to see, I don't think I'm going to be able to show this off to you, mostly because the dynamic range of light here is very small, but you can kind of see a little tiny bit how the, the, the little tritium tubes are glowing a little bit more than everything else. Um, and you can see how the top one there is orangey. Um, this is not an incredible effect, and in fact, I, I did my best in preparation for this review. I brought this into my pitch black bathroom and tried to shoot this guy with my phone, uh, which is what I film on, by the way, um, and it is so dim that you can't actually see it with the phone. That said, it is there. Absolutely. Once your eyes are adjusted, your eyes are much better at low light than my phone is. Um, and so it is absolutely there. And in fact, late in the evening, like at, you know, 4 a.m. or something like that, the tritium has been generally brighter than most of the watches that are on my table. There were definitely exceptions, but the tritium is a cool thing. The more important thing, though, like I said, is the fact that it is always glowing. It's not. A, it doesn't matter if this has been under your shirt sleeve all day long and never got exposed to any sun. It's gonna glow. Um, it doesn't matter whether you, you know, you're 18 hours into night because you're living in freaking Lapland and chasing reindeer. Uh, that, 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 that still, it's gonna be fine. Um, and it also allows them to do good, good, meaningful color differences. The fact that this top index is actually orange rather than green does show off and it makes 12 very, very apparent. Um, it's a nice little effect, and honestly, from a physics standpoint, it's neat as heck. I, the fact that there is nat, you know, natural radioactivity here that's causing something awesome on your wrist, it's not dangerous in any way, don't worry about that. But um, yeah, that's that's really, really neat. And so to me, what's really great about this guy is the tritium illumination, 100%. That's kind of the thing that Luminox has going for him. On the bad side, tritium's got some downsides. It is, um, this is the T25 tritium here, which just means that they're using 25, I think it's microcuries, 25, some very small unit uh, worth of radiation to get this effect here. Um, that's not a, that, that's kind of a thing. Um, uh, there were others that use even more of it that get a brighter glow. But um, the thing is, tritium is not as bright as freshly charged superluminova sorts of things. I will take a, a watch um, that has freshly charged superluminova, actually, because it's just been sitting on my uh, my windowsill there. Um, it is very, very bright and very, very apparent. Uh, and so that's a very big difference relative to what you're seeing off the tritium here. Um, and so what that means is that if you walk into a room, for instance, from outdoors, and your eyes are not freshly adjusted, a watch like this that has crazy amounts of chemical loom will be glowing a lot brighter than your tritium watch will. Once your eyes adjust, this will work just fine, but that's a thing. The other downside for uh, the tritium is that it is non-permanent. Um, it is 
subject to, well, the laws of physics regarding radioactivity. This has a half-life, which means it will be half as bright, illuminating every 12.3 years. That is the half-life of tritium. And once it gets, and it'll keep going, so then 12 years after that, it'll be half as bright as it was, then 12 years, half again, and keep going, 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 until eventually it will have faded completely. This is why many vintage watches that use tritium loom, um, and not the micro gas tubes, but the, the old-fashioned tritium loom, no longer glow at all. As it's just like been the, the, there's been the half-life there. And unfortunately, this needs to be sent back to Luminox for retubing if anything ever does happen with it, such that, you know, you, you run low on uh, your glow there. If anything happens, if physics happens, uh, you need to send it home. Unfortunately, though, uh, and moving on, you know, those are the downsides of tritium, but one of the downsides of the brand is that they have no mention anywhere on their website about retubing. Now, look, I get it. This is not something that's crucial. This is going to be something that happens every, like, 20 years or something, but... Um, but still, that's something I'd like to see, and especially in this price range, I'd like to see them at least offer, like, if you need the retube, this is what the cost is going to be. Other brands do offer that. Luminox doesn't mention it. They should. Next thing, this guy does not have any conventional loom. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, Nick, you were just saying tritium's different. It's got some advantages. But actually, to my estimation, the very best choice is both. Um, where you would have, for instance, if they had loomed using conventional superluminova, these numerals, and then, you know, painted the hands with a, a, a chemical loom, what you would end up with is a watch that was very, very bright, right, when you walked out from outside, and so it was bright to unadjusted eyes, and would be bright many nights from both the luminova as well as the tritium. But then on days when you can't, you know, see the Luminova, when it never got charged, then you would still have the tritium as a backup. Um, I've seen this been done before, and I think it's a really compelling kind of thing, where basically you get brightness immediately off the Luminova, uh, or the chroma, or whatever the heck uh, loom you want to use, um, and uh, then you get the long tail off of the tritium. I think that's a great approach, and I'm kind of sad they didn't do it here. This is a company with loom in the name. Damn it, loom. Um, so that's a thing. Um, next thing, the asymmetry on this guy is a little bit weird. Weird. You can see here that the date is uh, the day is in one position, the date is in another position. And that's kind of overlapping on the three. I'm not a big fan of how the dial layout is working here with your day and your date. Whatever, not a big deal. And it's a thing. Next thing, this is a dinner plate watch. This is a gigantic freaking watch. This watch you could serve guacamole off of and just keep it on your wrist and go at it with the chip every so often. I mean, this is a big watch. Um, I know that that is in style now, and of course, big people need big watches. I get that. Um, but Luminox, unfortunately, doesn't tend to make watches in more reasonable sizes, like 38, 39, 40 millimeters. Um, that's something that always makes me a little bit sad as somebody with smaller wrists. Um, and so, yeah, that's a thing. Next thing, this strap, like I said, it's very pretty, but it is unfortunately also very, very stiff. Um, it is a, a, a strap that just doesn't fit really well on my hand. Um, uh, you know, every time I wore this guy for review, it was just like... I felt like the strap was fighting me. It was like trying to come off. And I feel like they've probably put some kind of a stiffener in there, um, in the middle there with it, to try and kind of get this guy maybe more robust. But as a result, on a smaller wrist, and I have about 6.75 inch wrist, it just doesn't want to bend down to that level. And that's just not great. Couple that with the fact that it's using these double clasps, which are honestly kind of a pain. I mean, they work practically about the same as the other one, but it, there's just twice the probability that it's not going to get in there. And and the fact that it's also quite rattly on my wrist, because this little guy here, although it's a cool idea for pulling it up onto your wrist initially and getting a little extra leverage, uh, not a big fan of that at all. And so, honestly, this strap was one that definitely annoyed me, and if I was going to be wearing this in a long term, I would be swapping the strap out for something else absolutely 100%. Uh, given the size of it, probably like a bed sheet maybe would fit between... Anyways, I digress. Um, and so there you go. Next thing, this is not a super impressive quartz movement. Um, and I say that for a couple of reasons. You can see right here that every time the second hand stops... I will put this directly below the freaking camera so there's no parallax questions or anything like that. Every time that this stops, it's not really pointing at the indices. It can be a little bit better if you hold it up at an angle so that it looks like, and, you know, the weight then can be a thing. But honestly, guys, come on. Um, for the amount of money that you're paying here, this is not super impressive, and it's also missing some of the other features of higher-end quartz watches. I mean, it's got quick set day and date, which is good, but it doesn't have anything like uh, solar charging. It doesn't have radio control. It doesn't have a lot of the niceties that you get from Japanese brands of quartz watches um, at these kinds of price points, or frankly, well below these kinds of price points. And so ultimately, although quartz is a great choice, this particular quartz movement isn't like, oh my god, amazing. Um, and then finally, that brings us to the last issue, which is the price. The price 
price on this guy is super high. Um, it is 640 bucks is the retail price uh, for this watch. I'm seeing them substantially cheaper on the gray market, which is kind of a scary thing in and of itself. Um, and because they, you don't get warranties, you don't get any guarantee that, because remember, this is constantly, the tritium is always burning. Doesn't matter whether it's on your wrist or in a box someplace. So if you buy a watch on the, the gray market that's like 12 years old, then guess what? You're already half as bright as you started off. So that's a good reason to buy from an AD and whatnot. But the thing is, um, 640 bucks is a lot of money here. Like I said, that's the best of the best of the best. The Japanese quartz is already available there. Um, with a very few exceptions, that's right at the high end of quartz. I get that you're going to pay more money for the tritium thing. I get it, 100%. And I, I'm, So I'm fine with some tritium tax, but honestly, that feels really high. I had this guy figured like, okay, 450 bucks. Sounds about right to me. No, 640. Like, no, guys, you, you switched some numbers there. That didn't do it for me. Um, And so ultimately, especially given the, the, the nature of the quartz movement here, I mean, it's fine, but holy crap is that money. So um, to me, those are the bad things. Is that The price is super, super high, even for a tritium watch. Um, It's not a super impressive quartz movement. The pattern dial does impact the readability. I'm not a fan of the strap. It is a gigantic dinner plate. The asymmetry on the face is a bit odd. It's uh, There is no conventional loom, which means you don't get the best of both quartz worlds there. They, there's no mention of retubing on the website, and tritium is not the best choice for everybody, certainly. On the ugly front, I was a little torn as to whether the price was bad or ugly. I, I Maybe I'm underestimating how much it costs to make these tritium tubes, or to buy them off of somebody to install them or something, but uh, I was right borderline there. So, um, But that's, that's I guess, what I've got for ugly. Um, final conclusions, this is kind of a one-trick pony in my mind. Uh, what, what I mean by that, what that idiom means, is that this does exactly one thing uh, well, and that is it is a watch that has tritium loom. Um, but the thing is, any time I deal with a product like this, where it's kind of got one innovation, where it's just got one thing. The big question is, is it still a good watch when the, that one big thing is taken away? Because in a perfect world, it is a good watch that has one really great thing added to it. Um, and at some level, if we completely take aside the tritium, if we just knock these tubes off the dial, at some level, sure, it's a fine watch, I guess. It keeps the time. It's got a day, date, water is this sapphire. There's a fair amount of stuff going on in its favor. It'll be a watch that will serve you well, 100%. Nothing I'm going to say here impugns the fact this is going to serve you just fine. But it's also huge. It's also got a so-so strap. It's got a bargain basement quartz movement, or at least that's what it sure feels like, and a price that is just high. It really, really is. And so we're left with a watch that is, like I said, kind of interesting exactly for one feature. And so the big question becomes, well, how interesting is that one feature? I mean, at some level, it is awesome. I mean, from a physics standpoint, hell yes, that's awesome. And it's perfect if you were a mole person, never seeing the light of day for 12 years at a time, only to come up to change your Luminox watch out for the next one. And also, I got to be real here on the, on the re retubing thing. How very often do people wear the same watch for 12 years, for 24 years, etc.? Not all that super often. So there's a pretty good chance that if you wear this guy for 12 years, you'll have gotten your money's worth and you'd be willing to replace with a new one. But still, it bugs me that you can't do that. Anyways, I digress. But it's perfect if you're a mole person or if you live above the Arctic Circle enjoying your never-ending night times. You can charge a regular watch's loom off of a flashlight or something like that, but here you don't have to worry about it. And absolutely, this loom is brighter at 6 a.m. than the majority of watches are out there. And it's worlds better than the kind of bad loom that you see on a lot of entry-level pieces. But at another level, doing this review, because I've always kind of had Luminox in my mind, it's just like, oh my god, the loom is going to be amazing. But honestly, the loom is good, but the chemical loom that's out there, the Super Luminova stuff, is really, really good too, and I'm kind of amazed at how good that has been. I mean, for instance, the Tuta Pelagos here has just incredible loom and is just as readable at 4 a.m. as this guy is at 4 a.m., because it's just got huge swaths of loom and it's designed for legibility. Or like my Omega Planet Ocean, the Cassio Ocean is, heck, even the Seiko, the Seiko Divers have really incredible chemical loom, and I, I didn't find this substantially more readable than I found those in the past. Um, it, especially, you know, comparing again to relatively lower-end watches with really bad loom, this is going to be amazing. But, you know, I, I'm not a big... It's not like a crucial thing. And in, in intermediate situations where there is low light, but there is still light, that's in many ways where tritium is weakest because it's unlikely to be bright enough to make a difference uh, without adjusted eyes, but... 
there's nothing else on here there. And so that's where tritium can't keep up, and that's why I really would like to see the combined approach there. So, um, you know, what can I say? And there's very little to lose, at least from my perspective, for doing that. But the big question you have to ask yourself, final conclusion, stop and beating around the bush here, is does the tritium make more sense for me? Is that really the thing that you want? If you are looking at this watch because you just want to watch, honestly, I think you can do better elsewhere. You can get great watches from Citizen, Casio, Seiko, in this kind of a price range that are just, you're going to get a little bit more for your money in terms of features and whatnot like that. Um, but if you are after tritium, if you if you have those little gas tubes in your eyes, not in the painful way, and you, that they, they just won't let go, again, not in a painful way, um, you should absolutely consider this watch and, frankly, the rest of Luminox's range, along with the other folks who make tritium watches, like Ball and Knight and other brands like that. Um, you will pay dearly for those little gas tubes, absolutely 100%, but you know what? It's going to get something that's uniquely suited to the weird specifics of your life that make that perfect. But if you are not looking for the tritium, if you are looking at this as just like, I want to watch, yeah, it's a fine watch. It works. But you can do a lot better for a lower price, I think, elsewhere. And you can pretty safely illuminate this guy uh, from future consideration. Uh, okay. Hope this has been interesting and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.